power is the measure of a man. Without strength, how can you protect anything? Protect yourself. The Alpha and the Omega. Virgil. Dante may be my favorite out of the Brothers of Sparta, but that doesn't mean you'll catch me sleeping on my main man Virgil over here. The man is a powerhouse. When you can stop bullets by swinging your sword, line them all up, and then send them back, then you are a certified badass. And that's not all he can do. There's slicing through dimensions, providing these hands, and he's just... so fast. Virgil is not a man to be trifled with. There is one thing that motivates Virgil in this world, and that is power. For the entirety of the series, Virgil has been defined by an insatiable lust for achieving new power. It was this desire that made him try to summon the demon tower Temenegru to undo the seal between the human world and the demon world, in order to gain the power of his late father Sparta. You know, the guy powerful enough to place that seal on these different planes of existence in the first place. He was also willing to tear his own son's arm off to regain his lost power. Virgil very much is willing to do anything to gain power, to the point that it is obsessive. But why is he like this? Why are you the way that you are? To understand Virgil's lust for power, we actually have to examine his other half. The half he despises and quite literally cast out. His humanity. We must examine how his indifference and borderline hatred for humanity came to be. And we can do so by examining V. The inclusion of V into the series is not only a beloved one, HE'S SO GODDAMN COOL! but also a useful one for understanding Virgil's more human side because he is the literal embodiment of his humanity. Virgil, in his most desperate ploy for power, used the Yamato to completely separate his human half from his demon half. Understanding this origin suddenly gives Virgil so much more depth as a character. V is very calm and reserved. He had an air of mystery around him that made it really hard for anyone to be able to get a read on the guy, which is why Nero couldn't really trust him fully at first. However, the most distinctive aspect of his personality is his love for literature. V is constantly reciting poetry for pretty much anything. When he answers a question, I'm just saying that running away is okay. It's always okay to run away if you're not a boy. He who desires but act not breeds pestilence. So it is written. Okay, Shakespeare. When he's doing a little banter with his enemies, Not in this lifetime, as the air to a bird, or the sea to a fish, so is contempt to the contemptible. Hell, he even does it while fighting. Hours of folly are measured by the clock, but of wisdom, no clock can measure. Die. This seems like just a fun quirk of his, but I believe it serves as a much more deeper look into Virgil's humanity. Literature often serves as an emotional outlet for people who cannot convey their emotions through regular conversation. Sometimes people find it easier to create art rather than just talk about their problems. It can be a helpful coping mechanism for those who suffer from trauma, and is often used in therapy itself to help get at the core of understanding the person's emotions. Virgil always keeps himself composed, maintaining an aura of control that gives the illusion he has it all together. But V shows us that there is still a vulnerability to him. After all, I think having your family be slaughtered by demons and feeling helpless to stop the event definitely counts as trauma. It can be squeezed right in there, just barely. So it's understandable and completely human for V to have such a fondness of literature. Remember, this is Virgil's humanity given its own form, so he retains all of the knowledge and memories of Virgil. 
It's natural that the trauma he experienced would make him reserved, finding solace through an artistic outlet. And we didn't even technically need to examine V for this, because Virgil always had a love for literature, but it makes sense that now he has an even stronger connection to it. This is what Virgil's humanity looks like, the vulnerability he displays to Nero and Trish about the mistakes he's made, and his fondness for literature to help cope with his trauma. Now these features may be only shown in V, but they still come from Virgil. Yes, the same no-nonsense, takes himself too seriously, will square up on sight, Virgil. V being the embodiment of Virgil's humanity may mean that these features are exaggerated when presented from him, but they're still a part of Virgil's being. It shows that despite wanting to become more demonic, Virgil held some very human characteristics, and this he could not accept. You see, Virgil connects his weakness to being human. Ironically enough, the explanation for this just further proves how human he is. Virgil has a superiority complex. Loyal viewers will remember this term from when we covered Zed way back in the day. This term originates from Alfred Adler's individual psychology theory. Alfred Adler developed his theory on personality by making inferiority the driving force behind human behavior. According to individual psychology, humans are motivated by feelings of inferiority that developed early in our lives. These could stem from a number of things. Physical inferiority, like being born shorter or not as strong, or emotional inferiority, such as not feeling loved. This theory focuses on these feelings of inferiority and how they influence all of our actions. As we grow older and continue to leave these feelings unchecked, Adler believed that these feelings are usually a result of things such as early age physical limitations, a lack of empathy from parents, or absent parents altogether. Now, inferiority is not always a bad thing. These feelings can lead to people doing great things in this world to prevent others from feeling inferiority. For example, a person who grew up without parents could develop feelings of inferiority, but then use those feelings later in life to run a foster home, doing something for the betterment of society. This is an example of someone striving for success. However, people can also take those feelings of inferiority and use them to gain personal power. For example, a person who grew up poor and felt inferior because of it could grow up to become one of the most money-obsessed individuals on the planet. This is an example of someone striving for superiority. Virgil is not striving for the betterment of humankind. Instead, he wishes to achieve personal superiority. He strives to attain all the power in the world to make up for the feelings of inferiority he developed after that fateful day. According to Virgil, humanity is a source of weakness. But it's more specific than that. It is the emotions he felt during his incredibly traumatic experience that he despises. Emotions like terror, helplessness, and intense fear for his life. Dante was fortunate enough to have been found by his mother Eva, but Virgil wasn't so lucky. Virgil was left alone. This is how his inferiority was developed. He was powerless to prevent the attack on his family, and was left alone to suffer his trauma. As hard as she tried, Virgil! Where are you, Virgil? Eva never made it to Virgil. It is because of his humanity that Virgil was able to experience the emotions he did. Therefore, he linked his trauma to his humanity. So what did he do? He vowed to grow stronger. Virgil's crusade for power is in response to his trauma. By becoming the strongest, he will never have to experience that vulnerability ever again. Because this time, the world will cower in fear at the sight of Virgil. However, Virgil does not recognize his feelings of inferiority, which is why he is obsessed with power. It is normal for Virgil to have felt helpless. He was a child with a horde of demons rampaging through his home. If Virgil can give himself the opportunity to explore those feelings, then I guarantee you he wouldn't be as obsessive over it. But this is a special case because Virgil has a very concrete example of power. His demonic heritage. 
He is a super powered individual because he is half demon, so it's easy to see why Virgil would be so straightforward in his thinking. We even see V retain those feelings of inferiority during the moments where he's flat out disgusted at the idea of being threatened by weaker opponents. These threats imply that he is weak as well, that he is inferior. So of course he'll take that to heart if his whole character is trying to be superior. But more importantly, we also see V experience the fear and helplessness we were talking about earlier. V was back in the same situation that started Virgil's journey. Alone. Powerless. And afraid. In the presence of a large and powerful demon. With the only words he can utter to himself being, I don't want to die. Virgil uses his search for power as a coping mechanism to avoid ever feeling that helpless and vulnerable again. And it was working. By V's own admission, it had been years before he ever experienced those emotions again. Virgil sought superiority to protect himself, but until he resolves his issue with his trauma, he will continue to search for more power. It is what he uses to cope, but it does not directly address his emotional needs. And that is where Dante comes in. Dante is more than just an obstacle stopping Virgil from gaining power. He is a constant contradiction to Virgil's life. Virgil has developed an ideology that involves strength being the ultimate definition of a person. It is by living this way that he has prevented himself from ever feeling helpless again, and has made him one of the strongest beings on the planet. Being defined by strength worked for him, or at least it had worked for him, until Dante defeated him. That illusion of control he thought he had was shattered by his brother. This was not just any other defeat, this was an ideological defeat. Ironically enough, it's his emotional side that makes losing so anger inducing for him. There are times where we experience certain emotions as a reaction to things, and we don't even understand why we feel them. This is one of those moments for Virgil. We as viewers know that it is his emotional understanding of what that loss means to him that makes losing as big of a catastrophe as it is to him. But he will never be aware of that if he refuses to acknowledge emotions. Virgil's justice in this world for the pain he felt is strength at all costs. Dante's justice in this world for the pain he felt is compassion for those in similar situations. Virgil is motivated to avoid the pain that comes from human vulnerability, making him more cold-hearted and demon-like. Dante is motivated by embracing that pain, making him more compassionate towards other humans. Facing Dante is more than just overcoming an opponent, it's a battle of ideologies. By losing to Dante, it brings into question everything Virgil has believed to be true from his trauma. It's why in Devil May Cry 5, he questions what if Dante and him swapped places during that fateful day? Would he still believe everything he felt to be true? Or would things be different? One more fight should make things clear. Thank you all so much for watching. And more importantly, thank you for watching the first video, the Dante's Humanity video. I did not expect that video to be the one to actually give me one hell of a boost on my channel. Seriously, y'all made me jump from 600 subs to nearly 2,000 subs at recording this. I don't know why it was this specific video, but I am not gonna ask any questions. I'm just very grateful for it. So thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. I'm really motivated and excited now seeing such a positive response. So I think I'm going to do the Nero video next. I think that's what I'm going to do. And after Nero, of course, I'm going to try to provide you with more content that is, of course, outside of Devil May Cry. But who knows? If I figure out a topic for Devil May Cry, I'll come back to the series, of course. And as always, my people, thank you for watching.